Uh, let's welcome in our uh, guest uh, in the morning. Gorang Shah is now joining us. Srikant Shetty is with us. Amar Singh is also joining us. Good morning, gentlemen. Gorang, let's start with you. Before we take your picks, what's your call on the market? Markets are likely to start at an all-time high, but you still feel that markets can do well from here? Good morning, Pankaj. Well, I think we are going to see uh, much more higher levels in the future to come by. And uh, just going by the trajectory over the last four to five months, and as you were just referring to the fund activity, especially with the FII, by figure. Don't forget in the last four months they have been net net sellers and it's only in the recent times that we've seen them coming back and despite them selling off we are at the levels where we are uh, and of course on fallback of earnings visibility not only for the fourth and the last quarter but also for the next fiscal we are quite uh, optimistic uh, that things are going to look even much more better with consumption going up uh, as we go forward. Plus along with that you have the first July 2017 July date uh, for GST rollout and of course uh, you'll have many more policies unfold from the government side which will add to the environment becoming more cons uh, cons you know, uh, uh, constructive in terms of the growth story going forward. Uh, we are quite uh, positive and uh, I think uh, any dip in the market would be a great buying opportunity just in case if you are waiting on the sideline for the five state election result outcome and uh, have not been able to really participate our sense is that, that don't go all hog one time out, spread out your buying and uh, buy on every dip is what we've been recommending sectorally if you will, uh, Pankaj. Uh, uh, you could just give your picks as well, what to buy on dips. Yeah, so, you know, uh, we're quite positive on the NBFC uh, segment and with that perspective, there's one company, Sriram Transport Finance. Of course, last two days, you've seen good traction on the upside. We have a target of somewhere close to about 1200 plus. Uh, one of the largest uh, south-based uh, company in terms of uh, pre-owned trucks and new truck finance. And with the GST and scrappage policy, I think uh, the traction is only going to look uh, more you positive. You mentioned Sriram Transport, the, 1100, right. uh, the stock right. which has done 10% in the last two days. Last right? two days, that's right. Uh, so maybe at current levels, allocate something and maybe on depths you can add on to it. 1200 plus is the target on Sriram Transport Finance. Uh, if collapse is the other one, uh, 660 is the target. Yes, the stock has been stuck in terms of news flows. Not on the positive side, but on the negative side. But we remain positive with a target of 660 on IPCA Labs. And IGL, I think uh, the alternative fuel uh, theory uh, has been picking steam. And actually, if you go to see names like Gujarat Gas, IGL and Petronet LNG has given some kind of outperformance. Uh, 1150 is the target on IGL. And uh, we're quite sure that the government uh, you know, the policies as far as the availability of alternative fuel is concerned in uh, outskirts and highways and expressways is going to look more transparent and they are going to implement that at a fast scale. So we believe that this is also one company that you should have in your portfolio. Srikant, what will be your picks? Well, we continue to remain positive on the financial space uh, broadly. So it's one of them, uh, one of the picks among them is Equitas. Uh, so uh, we think that, that it's well poised for growth in terms of AUM, um, barring the demonetization impact which we saw in the last quarter. Uh, we think it's well placed now to uh, to grow. Uh, so at uh, our ROAs of 1.8 or almost 2 percent kind of thing, we think there is room for upside. So we have a target about 240 uh, for that, and the current valuation looks attractive. The second one, uh, I think the uh, the sector is in momentum currently is in tires, and uh, that's where we like see it from an investment perspective. I think the valuations are quite quite attractive there. Uh, of course, the near term triggers like uh, lower uh, rubber prices in the near term, which has happened, and plus the fact that Companies have raised prices, uh, which will mean that uh, the margins will be stable, which was one of the worries uh, which uh, Washington had. The uh, fact that uh, rubber prices will be low will mean uh, the margins will remain stable for these companies. And uh, at uh, 10x, uh, 10x uh, uh, price earnings, I think this is a stock which looks attractive. All right. Uh, Amar, what are your top picks? Yeah, very good morning. Uh, the first topic is uh, Adani Enterprises. We've seen a uh, sharp uh, rally in Adani and it's trading at a year's high. So uh, any pullback in Adani Enterprises towards uh, 101 can, uh, 100 can be used as a buying opportunity with a stop loss of uh, 96.40 and a target of uh, 107. So that's the first buy. The second is Arvind. Uh, Arvind, what we've seen is that uh, Arvind technically is also looking very strong on the charts and it's... Uh, it's witnessed a breakout. So any pullback towards uh, 396 uh, can be used as a buying opportunity with a stop loss of uh, 387 and a target of 413. 
and uh, the third is uh, LIC housing finance because LIC housing finance we've seen uh, it uh, uh, rally significantly and also it uh, remains strong on the charts technically there is uh, there is bullish momentum still there so uh, any pullback towards uh, 582 can be used as a buying opportunity uh, with a stop loss of uh, 576 and a target of uh, 597. All right. Uh, we in pre-open trade are seeing uh, the markets up about half a percent. The Nifty is uh, closer to uh, ninety-one thirty. Let's pull up the rupee for you. The rupee continues to trade strong and has gained in the first few minutes uh, a reasonable amount. It's now up nearly a seventh of a percent, closer to sixty-five point uh, two four to the dollar. Uh, so after the drop in the dollar, the rupee has become even more buoyant. Uh, the rupee is also getting a lot of support from the trade data that we got through for the month of February. February, the trade deficit is coming in $8.9 billion. Exports have seen a big jump, uh, growing by 17.5%. Imports, too, have seen a big jump, and uh, the imports were up 21.8%. Gold imports uh, themselves saw a big jump, up nearly 150%. Now, uh, uh, we're tracking the trend for exports, and it, it has shown a big jump in February. But even in December and January, we, see, we saw positive growth coming in for exports. So maybe there is a turnaround story that is being uh, seen in uh, Indian exports thanks to global growth picking up. Uh, as for imports, that's also telling you a story that perhaps demand is really picking up well within the country. In December, post demonetization, imports are absolutely flat, so no growth. But in January and February, we've seen a strong bounce back coming in for imports, perhaps uh, indicative of uh, economic expansion and demand growing fast. Right, Anisha. SBI will also be in focus. They had a board meet yesterday, which we had pointed out too, and board meet has approved fundraising. The amount of fundraising is about 15,000 crore. That's a big one. And they'll probably raise it in the next fiscal. That's for FI18, which means that it's an enabling resolution at this point of time. Fundraising can be via FPO, can be via rights issue, can be via QIP, ADR, GDR. So they've kept all the options open. In the release, they very categorically mentioned that the mode of fundraising uh, will be decided at an opportune time. They will take the approval of Government of India. They will take the approval of RBI and then go ahead and decide the mode of fundraising and how much they want to fundraise, which means that their current capital of 13.73, they don't need more capital at this point of time, but it's an enabling resolution. So if they need the capital, they have probably taken the board approval. Now they'll go to shareholders uh, for further approval of this fundraising. All right. Another stock that we'll be watching out for from the technology space will be HCL Tech. Uh, after TCS, now we're getting news uh, that HCL Tech uh, we'll have a board meeting on March 20th to decide on a buyback of shares. HCL Tech has a cash balance of $1.8 billion by the end of the third quarter of uh, FY17. Now, shareholders' equity is about $4.5 billion uh, in the same time period. And without the shareholders' nod, HCL Tech can buy up to 10% of equity. Uh, with the shareholders' nod, HCL Tech can buy up to 25% of uh, their equity uh, given the kind of cash balance that it has. Now, HCL Tech has been paying a quarterly dividend of 6 rupees a share. Uh, so, again, the entire buzz about buybacks and higher dividends uh, among uh, technology firms is back with HCL Tech's board meeting on March 20th to decide on a buyback. Staying with the payout theme, Anisha Hindustan Singh has also said that on March 20th, the board would be meeting. This will be for an interim dividend. Macquarie expects a dividend of about uh, 7 rupees per share. It's lower than what they had declared last year, but last year probably was one of the exceptional years. Overall, Hindustan Singh has uh, a sh uh, per share cash of around 60 rupees uh, per share. So they have the balance as of H1 to go ahead big dividend. It has already paid 28.7 rupees a share dividend as of now in terms of payout. Uh, they have about, uh, they paid about 24 rupees uh, last year, same time. And right now, the street is expecting about 7 rupees. It's a company which has 20% of its market cap onto cash and that's why 7 rupees dividend is what street is expecting. All right, now we will watch out for Bharti Airtel and Bharti Infratel as well. Now, Bharti Airtel has clarified that they are not looking to monetize a controlling stake in Bharti Infratel. Uh, they will only look at a sale of uh, closer to 21.6% stake. They will retain 50.3% stake in Bharti Airtel. Bharti Infratel, I beg your pardon. So, uh, promoters uh, Bharti Airtel plan to take uh, uh, to stay with a controlling stake in Bharti Infratel and 21.5% stake in Bharti Infratel at the current market price is close to 12,350 crore rupees. 
so uh, if you extrapolate it, um, 12,250 crore rupees repre uh, represents about 30 rupees a share for Bharti Airtel. The street was actually building in a majority stake sale by Bharti in Bharti and Patel. So both of these counters will be ones to watch and see whether there is some sort of negative reaction. If, uh, you know, the expectations that the street had, uh, it's not going to be like that. Reliance and the other telecom players will also be in focus. So what Reliance had done earlier was that they had offered a 50 rupees, uh, uh, you know, they had offered a 303 plan about uh, three weeks back, and now they have offered a 50 rupees cash back on the transaction. But the transaction has to be done through Geo Money Wallet. This 50 rupees can be redeemed on another recharge, which effectively means that their plan of 303 rupees uh, per month, which they had announced three weeks back, becomes around 253. Geo launched its 303 program back in uh, Feb, two, Feb uh, on Feb 21st. Since then, Reliance has done well. Don't really think that the street would take it negatively. But for the telecom war, it becomes a big one because it becomes more attractive for some of the uh, you know, uh, incumbents to go and uh, renew their Geo Prime offer. That's why maybe Idea, Bharti, all of it uh, could be in focus. Uh, the opening is expected anytime soon. It's expected. The markets are expected to open at an all-time high. The pre-open session is behind 9,129. Let's just see where the markets open. Do they actually take out that third resistance of uh, 9,100? Uh, 53. These are first trades uh, for you. Let's look at the Nifty uh, straight away. Uh, 9133, so it's at an all-time high, 48 points higher, now 53 points higher, 9138, uh, 9153, remember, is a level to watch out for. It's the third resistance. Currently, the market is between the second and the third resistance. That's a BHEL for you, 0.6% higher. Reliance Industries, 1309. We just uh, saw about the new offer that Reliance has uh, given out. ITC, 2 rupees higher. Infosys, about 3 rupees higher, 1015 at CLT. Uh, is among the top gainers. That's because of the buyback that they have announced. Uh, HDFC Bank is up, up about 3 rupees. HDFC Limited is up about 9 rupees. That's HCL Tech for you. It's the top gainer. Remember, they have a meet uh, for uh, their buyback. It's something which uh, TCS has done and now it's uh, HCL's turn. Uh, to do it. Uh, ONGC is up around 1.4%. No particular news flow, but crude was up overnight. Some of the other commodities were up. That's why maybe commodity stocks are doing well. Bank of Baroda, the management met uh, Deutsche Bank. There were some positive outcomes out of that. Maybe that's why the stock is up around 1.2%. Overnight, commodities, commodity stocks have done very, very well. And uh, that's also the case uh, with Alco and Alco. That's also a commodity name. Uh, it's uh, up around uh, 100 Right, so we are seeing in uh, opening trade, the markets look pretty firm. Um, BHL is up 1%, Aramoto is up 1%, HCL Tech, the biggest gainer, uh, gains 2%, Access Bank uh, up 1%. Now, uh, there are uh, a whole set of stocks that are moving up on uh, strong volumes. Uh, we have um, uh, GTL Infra, uh, it's been a stock, that one is up 10%. Uh, but um, Balarpur Industries is one that has been gaining for a number of days and today has seen a uh, good up move uh, on uh, uh, decent volumes. It's up 3% now. Uh, some of the real estate stocks are seeing action. JP Associates and Unitech higher by nearly 2%. Um, uh, we are seeing uh, some action in Hindustan Zinc as well. Uh, among the metal space, that's up 3%. Even Hindalco uh, has done well and moved up well today. So has JSPL so in the, uh, and Vedanta. So the metal space is one that is really buzzing today uh, in opening trade and we are seeing strong gains coming in there. Hatani Enterprises, uh, a pick from one of our guests, is up 1.5%. And SPI, uh, on the back of news of fundraising, is up about uh, a little less than a percent. Uh, Jay, uh, so this is what we're seeing as far as uh, uh, the top uh, traded counters are concerned. No big losers actually today. Idea Cellular is down about 1%. Uh, but other than that, we're not really seeing uh, a lot of profit taking coming through. Um, uh, Goranka... What would you do with Bharti Airtel and um, Bharti Infratel? Uh, what expectations did you have about uh, the monetization of stake in Bharti Infratel? Uh, at this point in time, Bharti Airtel not doing much. But given the competitive uh, pressures and uh, uh, what Bharti Airtel is saying about value unlocking, what would you do with these two counters? So, firstly on Bharti Infratel, well, we had a reduced stroke sell recommendation and our lower target prices that we had set aside is already there in the price. So, and then after that, we had dropped the coverage on Bharti Infratel. On Bharti Airtel, uh, we had a buy recommendation earlier and then targets were in place. We had come out with a sell recommendation since on the fundamental, the target price was in place. 
And as Pankaj was alluding to a while back, 303 offer with a 50 rupees uh, cashback on Reliance Geo Money uh, platform uh, makes the offer very attractive. Uh, and in terms of tariff war, I think it's a long, long way for this particular tariff war to end and pricing power coming back. On fallback of that, I think earnings of most of your cellular service provider companies is not going to look very interesting uh, in terms of uh, higher traction. And in terms of uh, subscriber base, well, one will have to wait and watch uh, post this 1st April uh, commercialization of uh, the services that Reliance Geo offers. What are the kind of number of subscriber base, especially in the top end of the pyramid that stays with Reliance Geo? or with the help of mobile number portability gets uh, migrated to some other service provider. In and all, I think uh, earnings are going to look uh, much more depressing than what one would have estimated uh, on fallback of discounts, freebies, and of course uh, on the data, uh, again, uh, increasing number of uh, GB being available uh, at a fixed price and, uh, and some amount of that will be free. So my view is that uh, telecom service provider space as such Though it is in news for good reasons, post the Vodafone and Idea, and we saw Idea recover from 50, 60 rupees to 125. Over there also we had a coverage and at the current level our targets are in place, so we would advise profit booking in Idea Cellular as well. Just stay away for some time till the time you have clarity in terms of earnings and pricing power coming back. Right, uh, Shrikant, uh, in terms of uh, you know markets, what will be your call? It's at an all-time high. Uh, you know, valuation-wise, one would say it's not at an all-time high, but close to an all-time high in terms of valuations. What will be your call on the markets? See, overall, uh, we continue to have the positive stance. I mean, uh, see, if you look at the index-based stocks, I think there is there is room for growth. I mean, uh, there there are some stocks maybe which are is fair, fair valuation. But if you start seeing growth come back in corporate earnings, which is what expected, you know, uh, let's say on the policy reform front, there's more action coming through from the government. I think there is room for growth. So on a broad perspective, we will remain positive on on the index. So there can be intermittent corrections because uh, from what was a couple of months back uh, post demo on uh, the kind of reactions which the market saw and the correct current reactions. So from complete pessimism to uh, to a certain amount of euphoria is what we are entering into. So clearly that there, there may be a case for some profit taking somewhere. But uh, but from a more broader longer term perspective, we think there is still room for upsides from a long term perspective. You, know, you pointed out that uh, NBFCs are among your top picks and that is something that you like. Do you believe that private banks also come into that category? They will continue to grow? Yeah, I think broad financials. I think if you look at private banks, NBFCs, uh, housing finance space, uh, all, all these spaces have been consistently growing at a good pace. And uh, we continue to like uh, like this space. Uh, if you look at private banks, whether it's Yes Bank, Indusind Bank, Kotak, I think all have been uh, delivering very strong growth numbers. And... Uh, uh, we, we would think uh, these these could remain continue to remain uh, remain strong contenders from a growth perspective. Uh, within the MBFC space, as I said, housing finance remains pretty strong space. But you continue to like Canf Canfin Homes, uh, Repco, Home Finance. Uh, so these are these are some of the stocks which you would continue to like. Right, uh, uh, Gorang. In terms of metals, what will be the call? So overnight, of course, you saw what Fed did. Dollar index fell. Metals rose. Uh, you know, ri uh, saw a rise. That's I'm talking about the underlying metal stocks. Do you think metal stocks uh, would continue to be in focus on the positive side? Well, we have seen some really depressing values in terms of metal pack about a year back or maybe more. And after seeing those levels, we've seen a significant uh, recovery as well in the entire metal pack. Be it uh, JSPL, be it Sale, be it Tata Steel, Vedanta, Hindalco, JSW Steel, or any other metal name or companies associated with the metal sector. Our view is that at current levels, if you make to want to make a fresh investment, then uh, Hindalco is something that we would recommend and JSW Steel. On Vedanta and JSPL, uh, we would advise a buy on dips because they are relatively closer to our target price that we had set aside. In terms of consumption also, Pankaj, uh, we believe that if the government uh, has to focus on the infrastructure spend of budgetary allocation somewhere close to about 4 lakh crores, uh, and if the government uh, wants to improve the infrastructure with the help of metal and cement, two commodities, I think it will be a long way for the domestic companies to grow, subject to government only focusing or procuring their requirements from the uh, domestic companies and not import it. Uh, we have had uh, some positive cushioning in terms of minimum import price and anti-dumping on the cheap Chinese commodity imports that we have. 
and if there is going to be some amount of pull back by the chinese company in terms of manufacturing capacities like it last time i think that's going to be only adding to the comfort level for the domestic companies and of course you should have level playing field uh, for the domestic players as well as for those uh, consumers who import uh, from international market uh, if that is not properly balanced i think the domestic companies would tend to lose out but as of now we are positive on the names that we have mentioned right uh, amar uh, as far as tire stocks are concerned uh, shrikant earlier mentioned about uh, the positive uh, fundamental view on tire stocks can you just tell us uh, what will be the technical call on tires any names like seat apollo tires i think balakrishna industry is also up 4% today yeah overall uh, tire stocks after uh, a consolidation we've seen a sharp uh, rally over the past uh, uh, couple of days and uh, apollo tires uh, has uh, we witnessed a breakout in apollo tires and it's uh, trading above uh, 190 earlier the uh, level of resistance for apollo tires was somewhere around 190 so that has been taken out and in the last uh, i would say three trading sessions it's up by almost uh, 5 to 6% so overall uh, technically also apollo tires is uh, strong so one can uh, look at uh, buying but i would say that overall uh, the broad based market sentiments uh, uh, would also have an impact but uh, yes uh tire stocks uh, uh, could see some uh, upside uh, rally but i would say for apollo uh, tires any uh, buy the stop loss has to be uh, 189 to 190 that should be the stop loss and uh, on the upside if one buys at the current levels and the target uh, could be in the range of 207 to 208 <coughs> All right um, we're seeing um, the nifty bank also make a new high today uh amar uh, have you had a look at tata power tata power is uh, amongst uh, the stocks that has moved up well on strong volumes today but uh, just a few days back it again started around 86 levels and uh, you know fell quite significantly uh, what do you see on the charts for tata power yeah overall uh, looking at tata power what we are seeing is that uh, it has uh, witnessed a breakout and uh, Uh, tata power after a lot of uh, consolidation it's taken out the 85 uh, levels and uh, it's trading above that level and technically also it's strong on the uh, long term charts on the on the medium term charts as well as the short term charts and this breakout if it continues to sustain because uh, today we've uh, seen it uh, uh, seen this breakout so if this sustains means that if tata power continues to uh, trade consistently and close above 85 levels then it's headed higher towards uh, 88 to 89 uh, levels in the short term and overall uh, the support immediate support for uh, tata power on the downside is in the region of 8370 83.7 to 84 levels all right uh, gentlemen thank you so much for joining us on ndtv profit and uh, giving us the top picks and uh, discussing the markets with us as you go please leave us with the disclosures uh, shrikant any disclosures uh, no personal holdings uh, but yeah our clients could be holding any of the stocks which we recommend Garang, your disclosures. Well, thank you both of you. Uh, no investment in any of these stocks uh, discussed, but uh, recommendation could be a part of our client's portfolio. Amar, your disclosures. Uh, no personal holdings in the stocks that I have discussed. Uh, clients could be holding uh, positions in these stocks. Thank you, gentlemen, for being with us on NDTV Profit.